And so we just magnify your name today. We make it big, Father God. Yes, Lord, Lord God, we Father recognize God. that all Hallelujah. that we are and all that we hope to be, yes. it comes from you, Lord God. Yes. You have blessed us. You have kept us. You have surrounded us, Lord God. You have protected us. Lord, you have made the crooked places straight, Father God, and the rough places smooth, Father. So we just thank you and we give honor to you today. Yes. Lord, we say, yes. have your way in this service today, yes. God. Have your way Lord, we call not only for ourselves, but we call uh, for, on behalf of those who are in harm's way today, God. We ask, oh, Father God, that you would be a shield about them, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, that you would be hope for them today, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh, God, in the name of, the Je in the name of Jesus, that you would uh, just surround and protect them, Father, in Jesus' holy name. And now may you be glorified in all that we say and do here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to ask Brother Roger if he'll put up the uh, declaration. Um, probably next Sunday I'll be asking uh, my other worker up there to put up the declaration. Y'all do the business thing? Um, business? Put up what needs to put up. Whatever the Lord is, it says, We have come here today, today to worship the Lord. And to hear what he has to say. He has led us to this place that is full of his spirit and love, and reminds us that all good things come from above. By God's spirit and not by mind, the people shall press their way to this Holy Ghost site. It is not hard for us to see that the dying world is out there, and at God's request, until they are saved. I shall not rest. As a child of the Father, I have pledged to do my part. I will actively seek to lead the lost to God. Truly, there is a reality in serving the Holy One. Just look and see what the Lord has done. We call them from the four corners of our community to come and partake of this glorious opportunity. But for this hour, my heart is turned to the Holy One to pray, worship, and give thanks for all that He has done. This is my Holy Bible, the inherent and infallible Word of God, and I rely on my Bible with all my heart. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord.
Just to 
but meditation is one of the ingredients. So when we talk about meditation, many times we have a misunderstanding of meditation. Because the world uses meditation, the word more than we do. Because many times we don't really understand what meditation is. And we get our understanding from the, from the world and from other false religions. And there are many religions today where they call what they have meditation. If you ever practice yoga, you probably got into some of these. You know, where you fold your legs up and you whatever and you go rock backwards and forwards and go do <laughs> that's, that's not what we're talking about. That's right. Come on now. So uh, in all your Pastor Rick's Proverbs chapter four, and all that you get is an understanding. So that's not what we're talking about, meditation. Well, what is meditation? Meditation means to dwell on something in your thought mind. So meditation is about what you what you are thinking about. Not only just what you are thinking about, but meditation is a continuous thought process on a particular subject or thing. So meditation is to continually to think about something or something. Meditation means to roll something over and over in your mind. Meditation means to contemplate something. Meditation means to think on something. Meditation means to mutter or to say under your breath. You know, anybody ever told you something? And uh, maybe because they was in authority, you didn't want them to hear it. So you said something different, real low under your breath. Anybody ever done that besides me? Mm -hmm. That's that's a part of your meditation. You was meditating, but you didn't really even know it. <laughs> meditation means to ponder. Meditation means to imagine. Uh, there's a song called I Can Only Imagine. Anybody ever heard that song? Amen. And it's a song about what's going to happen when you see God and get to heaven. Now, none of us have ever been to heaven, but we can only imagine. Amen. And that's meditation. Meditation is a part of is thinking about, so the song says, Will I bow down or will I stand up and praise? And so it's using your imagination. Can you see yourself in heaven? And if you can't see yourself in heaven, you may not be able to get there. Mm. Come on. And see, if you can't see yourself in your heart and your mind doing something to get it, you may not even get it. If you're sick today, and if you can't see yourself well, you may not be able to get well. And so, uh, all that is a part of meditation. And see, uh, uh, we have to uh, we have to understand that. And God used meditation all throughout the Bible, and uh, that's why the Bible is full. Of uh, stories full of parables. You know, uh, 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 God always tells people, go look at this. Right there in the book of Proverbs, it says, go to the end. Go look at the end and see how they work. Why? Because God wants to give you a picture so you can think about what the end does and you can be in the their image. God always gives you a picture. Because Pastor preached about believe to receive uh, to see it. Yes, you have to believe to see it. But at the same time, really, before you believe, you got to see it to believe it. And this seeing is not with natural eye. But you got to see it in your mind and in your spirit before you believe it. 
If you don't see it in your mind and in your spirit, you probably won't believe. You got to see it in your heart. Even though you can't physically see something. Anybody ever seen something in their mind before they ever seen something physical? Now, anybody ever built something? When you get ready to build something, you can't say, well, I can't build it because uh, I, I, I don't see it. So I can't. Whoever built this church, they couldn't wait and say, well, I got to see the church who I built. If they did, there ain't going to never be no church. That's right. <laughs> but what they did have to do, what they did have to do, they had to see it, so they saw it in their mind. They saw it in their mind. If even before they ever started building, they saw it in their mind. That's a part of the meditation. So I'm going to think of what I'm going to build. And then they got even, even further, they got somebody to draw out some blueprints. Got somebody to draw out some blueprints so uh, I can see it on paper. Even though there is physically not there, now I have the piece of paper that I can see it on. But before it was on the piece of paper, it was in my mind. It's the same way about anything you get from God. Before you get well, you got to see yourself well. If all you can do is see yourself sick, you're going to remain sick. And you're probably going to die. And most people, before they die, that's what they do. Oh, I can, they get, oh, I can see myself dead. Oh, I'm going to have Brother Smith sing this song in my funeral. And he said, you're seeing yourself dead. Even though you ain't dead yet, you see yourself dead. You know what? You probably don't mind. That's right. And so all that's a part of meditation. And some people meditate on being sick. You sneeze one time. <laughs> Come on. And then you see yourself <laughs> in the hospital with COVID. Come on here. Come on now. <laughs> and, and how did you get that COVID? You got it because Right, you saw it. Yeah. And so that's how important meditation and imagination play. That's why it's the secret ingredient. It's been working for us a long time. Everybody know how to meditate. The problem is that we've been using meditation in the wrong way. Everybody know how to meditate and imagine. Our problem is we've been using it in the wrong way. We've been meditating on what the devil has been saying. We've been meditating on what the devil has been showing us. How many of you know that sickness and disease come from the devil? God is not making you sick. So if you're seeing yourself sick, where is that coming from? If you see yourself sick today, laying in bed sick, can't get up, can't walk, head hurting, stomach hurting, if you see yourself that way, where is that coming from? Yeah. Where is that coming from? Yeah. Right, that's coming from the devil. Because God is the one that heals you. Will of God's name is Jehovah Rock. Amen. And that means the Lord that healeth thee. And that's in the book of Exodus. He told the children of Israel, I am the Lord that heals you. So God is not putting sickness on you. And so what the devil wants to do is he wants you to give you a picture of sickness. And he wants you to think about that. But God wants to give you a picture of healing. And God wants you to think about healing. The devil wants to give you a picture of hate, and he wants you to think about hate. Anybody ever had unforgiveness against somebody? Mm -hmm. So you know how to, if you ever had unforgiveness against somebody, you know how to meditate. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Whatever they did, 
But that bad stuff they did to you, how many times did you think about it? Hmm. That was meditation. You didn't know you was meditating. The devil showed you this picture. Look what they did to you. It, 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 it'll let that uh, uh, take place. Then he'll be around again. Shh. See what they did to you? Shh. Get to the end. Oh, it's about to end. I need to be around again. Shh. Look at it. Look at it. See what they did to you? Shh. See what they did to you? And so you were seeing what the devil wanted you to see. But God wants you to stop seeing what the devil wants you to see. And start seeing what he wants you to see. Come on. Now, now what God wants you to see, God wrote it down in a book called the Bible. Mm -hmm. And see, that's why a whole lot, a lot of people is against the Bible. And understanding where that came from. If you are against the Bible, where did that come from? The devil. Right, that's the devil. Because the Bible is God's word. Amen. I didn't believe the Bible is God's word. Amen. And so this is what God wants you to meditate on. And in Psalm 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, not standeth in the way of sinners, not sinners in the seat of scorn, but his delight is in his what? The law of the Lord. And this book contains the law of the Lord. And so this is what God wants you to meditate on. Because in this book contains what God wants you to have. How God wants you to live. Can you see yourself with what God wants you to have? Can you see yourself living the way God wants you to live? And if you can't see yourself having what God wants you to have, you ain't going to have it. If you can't see yourself living the way God wants you to live, you ain't going to live that way. Whether you're on drugs, alcohol, whether you, you, you know, you're stealing, whether you're in sexual perversion, or, or whatever is going on, even while you're in that, See yourself the way God wants you to live and do. If you're homeless today, see yourself as a place to live. But why? Because God wants you to have a place to live. A matter of fact, as I said, I'm going to get a little help of myself, but I may come back. In Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, it says, Take, he says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, not yet for your body, what you shall put on. If not the life more than meat, and the body than rain. See, God don't want you to think about, uh, I don't, don't have enough to eat. God don't even want you to think about that. Anybody ever thought I don't have enough to eat? God don't even want you to think about that. Because you know what God said? Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all your needs according to the riches and glory. Amen. Amen. So when you think about Oh man, I ain't got nothing to eat. I ain't got nothing to wear. Where did that thought come from? You see, you can go around all day long thinking about, I wasn't well to eat. You know, you can spend all day, I can spend all day Saturday thinking about, man, when I'm going to wear tomorrow. Tomorrow is Sunday when I'm going to wear. God don't, God don't want you meditating and thinking about it. You can roll that stuff over and over in your mind. And there are some people in the world where they have food challenges, but most of the time when we say I don't have anything to eat, what we mean is 
I don't have anything that I like or that I want right now to eat. Because most of us got something in our refrigerator, our cabinet. It may not be what we want or what we like, but we got some food. And like me, most of us got clothes. You know, I could have spent uh, Saturday saying, uh, I wouldn't want what to wear Sunday. What I mean, what suit I'm going to wear? Because I got other clothes, that, you know. I, you know, and it's the same about all of us, you know, in America. And so God don't want, even want us to think, God don't want us to think in that way. Anybody ever thought about, I don't, I don't have anything to eat? I don't have anything to wear? Anybody ever thought of that way before? See, God don't want you to think that way. See, you need to think about Philippians. See, when, when that thought comes to your mind, God wants you to get Philippians 4.19. Think about that. My God shall supply all, all my needs. And see, meditation is continued rolling that over and over in your mind. You roll it over and over in your mind. And actually what you can do, the best way to do it is to make a song out of it. You know, you can make a song. It's not really already a song. My God should supply all my needs. And see, a song is something that we've, set, that we've seen over and over again. Most of us, anybody here know, my God should supply all my needs. Anybody ever heard that before? And most of us, we don't want nobody else telling us that because we've heard that before. Anybody ever heard that before? So most of us, we don't like people telling us that. Oh, I know that. But it's more than just knowing that, it's meditating on it. You know what's different between knowing something and meditating on something? Just because you know something, that don't mean you meditate on it. So God wants you to meditate on my God, just a cloud on my knees. Yeah, I know that. What that man stand up there telling me that? I already know that. So let me go to sleep. But God wants you to meditate on that. And sometimes we have a problem meditating on it. And if you have a problem meditating on it, just make it into a song. It don't really even have to be a song. You can make your own, make up your own song. You know that? And anybody ever notice the song that we sing? Uh, as they say, uh, if you ever come out here on Friday night, you heard them say, they said, now, how many times do we sing this? Do we sing it two times, three times, four times, or eight times? Well, you already said it one time, why do you need to say it again? You sang it one time, uh, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. You said it one time, why do you have to say it again? You sing the song. And in the song, you say, Lord, I lift your name. Why do you have to you say, say it more than one time? Why? Because you meditating on that. And meditating is revolving something over and over in your mind. That's why in Psalm 1, uh, in verse uh, 2, it says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. So that means the word of God is that he thinks about it day and night. You ever say, Now, I read my God's supply all my need this morning. So I don't need to think about it right now because I read it this morning. Anybody ever said that besides me? I read that this morning. So why do I need to think about it now? Because I read it this morning. But you see, it does something in you when you roll that thing over and over in your mind. When you roll it over and over in your mind, it begins to get to your heart. When you think about something continuously, it begins to get in your heart. You see, you can know my God's supply all my needs. You can know it in your 
man. But it's in your heart. There's a difference between something being in your mind and something being in your heart. Meditation is one of the key things that takes it from your mind to your heart. As you think about it over and over, it begins to go from your mind to your heart. And see, uh, in Proverbs chapter 4, where Pastor Jean read this morning, uh, there's a verse down in there that says that out of the heart comes the issues of life. Out of the heart comes the issues of life. Out of the heart comes the issues of life. Somebody said, well, you said that one time. Why well, do you need to say it again? Because I want you to meditate on it. I didn't ask you if you know it. You need to meditate on it. And understanding the difference between knowing something and meditating on something. They say, Lord, I love you, man. Lord, I love you. You said it one time, but well, you get to say it again. We know that. Yeah, but we want you to meditate on it. You know Psalms 136? Psalms 136. At the end of every verse in that song, it says, For the Lord is good. And his mercy endure it forever. They said that I think in, in the second or third verse. But then you get down to the tenth verse, it's still up. Why they got to write it again? They already wrote it one time. Why they got to write it again? You know what? Because they want you to meditate on that. And sometimes we take offense because somebody said something more than one time. You know what the preacher Gilbert said? The Lord is good. Yeah, the Lord is good. Yeah, the Lord is somebody take offense of that. Why you got to, can't you go on? Yeah, he said so he wants you to. He know you know that. But there's a difference between knowing that and meditating on that. Yeah, we know that's in your mind, but is it in your heart? And understanding the difference between something being in your mind and something being in your heart. And that's something we have to understand. Now, I want to talk about, for a, little, for a few minutes, the book of Psalms. Anybody know what the book of Psalms is? The book of Psalms is a book of songs. It's a book, book of praise. And it's a book of prayer. So it teaches us the word of God in songs. There's 150 songs. And each one of those songs is a song. And there's something about singing that causes those songs, causes us to meditate on what we sing. And we can, we can some, anybody else probably remember the word of God? Be a problem giving the word of God, make it into a song. Because there's something about a song that we remember. And we was in Sunday school one Sunday. And uh, in the book it was talking about this scripture that they uh, was a song. And somebody in the Sunday school said, Well, I never heard that song. You can take any scripture in the Bible and make your own song. Make your own song. That way you are meditating on it. That way you remember it. And that way it will get in your heart. And I'll tell you something else about it. You fall in love with it. Anybody here in love with the word of God? And that's my prayer for all of you. That you fall in love with the word of God. You know, notice I didn't say that you fall in love with God. I said you fall in love with the word of God. 
Even though God and His Word are one, you see, the Word of God is God's instruction. The Word of God is God speaking to you. The Word of God is how we know God. And you see, most people, when you say God, it could be anything. Some people is a tree. Some people is a house. Some people is a statue. Some people is an ideal. But we can really only come to know who God is, His Word. Otherwise, we just have our own ideal of who God is. Apart from His Word, we don't know who God is. Apart from his word, we make up our own God. And that's what people say, oh, I know God. Do you know his word? I know, but I know God. You don't know God. If you don't know God's word, you don't know God. And so, you may be in love with something that's really not God. You call it God, but it ain't the real God. So my prayer is that you fall in love with the Word of God, that you get into the Word of God, and that you understand the Word of God. Not only just read it, but study it, meditate on it, fall in love with it, that it be your companion everywhere you go, that the Word is your companion. That you're never alone because the word is with you. Yeah. That the word is always on your mind. But if you don't know the word, if you don't read the word, if you don't meditate on the word, I mean, you know that the Bible is God's word, and yeah, I should read it. So you open it up and you bump it through things, but it don't mean nothing to you. But as you begin to meditate on the word, it don't have to be a whole lot. Anybody ever heard of Psalms 23? There are what, five verses in there? You don't have to know all those five verses. Anybody know what the first part of that? First verse, not in the whole verse, first part of it. The first part of the first verse. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, anybody know how to meditate on that? The Lord is my shepherd. What does that mean? First of all, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So, if God is my shepherd, that means I, I, I don't want, don't lack anything. I don't have any needs because God is my shepherd. So if God, if the Lord is my shepherd, what does that make me? If the Lord is my shepherd, what does that make me? Does it make me a gopher? <laughs> <laughs> so the Lord is my shepherd. That means what does the shepherd do? Take care of the flock. So if the Lord is my shepherd, what does that make me? Out of the flock. A sheep. A sheep. A sheep in the flock. Yeah. So all that's meditating. All that is a part of meditating. So maybe you need to go buy a sheep form. Go buy a sheep form. See what the shepherd does on a sheep form for the sheep. All that's a part of meditation. Somebody say, yeah. And really, that's a part, that's what study, when they say study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What does study mean? Some people think study just, is just an academic term. The study just means academic. And all that's a part of it. You really need to be uh, it's good if you are academic. Some of us may not be academically in camp class. Everybody understand what I mean when they say academic. Means that you're into books. Some of us are not really into books. But as I say, 
go by when you say the Lord is my shepherd. That study means to study means to be diligent. It means to do everything that you can to find out what God's word means. Study means to be diligent. Whatever I need to do, whatever I need to do to understand what God's word means, then I am going to do that. If I need to go by a sheep form to understand what the Lord is my shepherd me, then I'm going to go by a sheep form. Everybody understand that? And that's a part of me studying God's word. You may not have never thought about that before. But studying means more than just an academic term. Study means to be diligent. And see, when you fall in love with the word of God, you do that. And God can show you, can talk to you in the place through anything. But see, when you study, the part, that part of God's word is, is on your mind. The Lord is my shepherd. So I take that home with me. I go to bed with that. The Lord is my shepherd. What does that mean for the Lord is to be my shepherd? What does that mean? I can get a dictionary and look up the word. But maybe I don't know how to use a dictionary. So I can go by the sheet form and see what it means to say the Lord is my shepherd. All that's a part of study. All that's a part of meditation. So my heart and my prayer is for you to meditate on the word of God. Meditation on the word of God brings blessing. It brings prosperity. I'm going to read one other verse I'm, I'm going to close. Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 9 says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river of the all the land of the Hittites unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for the inheritance of the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper, but to ever thy goal. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate during the day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosper, and then thou shalt have good success. And now I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Need to be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou go. Now, I, I want us to, to think about this passage. Everybody know who Joshua is, who Moses is. So, Moses is dead. Joshua got to take over at the lead. What does Joshua do? Can Joshua be, be Moses? How does Joshua lead the people? By commandments. Joshua lead the people 
by meditating in the Word. That's how Joshua leads the people. How did Joshua become a successful leader? By meditating in the Word. How did Joshua take those people into the land and conquer all those Canaanites? He did it by meditating in the Word. Verse 8 says, that this book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth. And speaking the word is a part of meditation. Speaking it to yourself. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. It says, For then, for then, thou shalt make thy way prosperous. So how did God, how did Joshua do it? Moses is dead. Joshua got to take over. How did Joshua do it? By meditation on the word. Right. right. Meditating in the word. That was the secret ingredient that called Joshua to succeed. Joshua was successful because he meditated in the word. Well, somebody said, well, how do you know where you get that from? Right there, that word says, isn't that what it says in verse 10? It says, you will make your way prosper. And you will have good success. If you meditate in this book of the law day and night. This book of the law should not depart out of your mouth. So what was coming out of Joshua's mouth? The word of God. Right, the word of God. What would make you successful? On your job? What would make you successful in your home? What would make you successful in your marriage? What would make you successful in your health? What would bring healing to you? If you sick, what's gonna bring healing to you? The word meditation. Meditating the word. Finding the word that says something about what's going on in your life. Meditating on it, speaking it, and praying that word to God. So if you sing today, turn over the book of Isaiah 53. It says, for he was wounded by our transgression. He was bruised by our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Man. How many of somebody said, Oh, I heard that. What you telling me that for? I've already heard that before. Somebody said, Well, uh, I read I read that before. Yeah. Right, read the meeting. Somebody said, Well, uh, I've heard already thought about that before. Thinking about it again. Somebody said, I read that this morning. Read it now. Yeah. Read it tonight before you go to bed. When you go to work, or you go to work in the morning, think about it. When you have a break to, uh, tomorrow, think about it. Somebody says, oh, I can't do that. See yourself healed. See yourself getting up. See yourself doing what you couldn't do before. See yourself successful. Find the scripture that promise you promotion. It says that promotion comes from God. Thank you, Lord. That song said the back. And if you can't remember anything else, just, just you know, just remember that promotion comes from God. You go to work in the morning, promotion comes from God. How am I going to get promoted? It comes from God. So just the, the tiny little bit, it don't take a whole lot. Just use what you got. And if you're sick, and if Isaiah 53, all you know, Meditate on that until you hear something else. Don't just say, I know that. I read that before. I heard that before. And so many times that's what we do with the word of God. And so that's something we have to understand. That's where God wants to take us. He wants us to meditate on this word day and night. God bless you. Amen.
Oh, yeah. And, uh, I was thinking about that last portion of scripture from Joshua that he quoted to us. says, meditate that you may observe to do. Observe me to look at something, to see something. Right. So meditate that you may observe to do. Because as we think on the scripture, uh, it does reveal things that we hadn't thought about. You know? And you go, oh, never thought about it that way. Because the Holy Spirit is right.